Hey Maker, welcome to the Snapseed Photo Editing for Product Photography six part video series. This is video four. This is a six part video series and you can easily access all the videos by clicking the link right here or in the description below. If this is your first time joining me, my name is Christina Nicole, and I am a product photography coach teaching makers like you how to take your own high quality product photos that actually attract more customers and make more sales for your product based business. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Snapseed to resize your product photos to meet Etsy's recommendations. Resizing is super important because what comes from your camera isn't always the right shape for the listing thumbnail and how Etsy chooses to display it. When your image isn't the right shape, Etsy will crop from the center out, resulting in your product potentially getting cut out of that first image thumbnail. Resizing your images with my three step process prior to uploading your photos to Etsy will guarantee that your products look amazing in search. It will also ensure that your product photos load properly. Let's take a look. So if we take a peek at the metadata, which is just the information that travels with the photo, you will notice with this original image that I shot this photo with a Canon Rebel T8i. It has 21 megapixels with pixel dimensions of 5,328 by 4,000 and a file size of 6.3 megabytes. So this is a ton of pixels and this is a really, really large file size. Well, when it comes to uploading photos online, we actually want less pixels and a small file size so that they load nice and fast. Let's jump into the three steps of resizing. So step one of resizing is cropping to the proper aspect ratio. As I mentioned earlier, resizing is important because what comes from your camera isn't always the right shape for the listing thumbnail and how Etsy is going to display it. Now, Etsy recommends that you upload your photos in a 4-3 aspect ratio, which means they will be landscape, so they will have more width than height. And depending on what you have set within your camera, your camera has the ability to produce images with different aspect ratios. I highly recommend you go into your settings and set that to a 4-3. This will help you properly frame your photo when shooting in a landscape. So I have made all necessary edits to this photo except for cropping. So step one of resizing is cropping to the proper aspect ratio. So we're gonna go to tools and we're gonna select crop. And at the bottom, you're gonna see a bunch of different aspect ratios pop up. You wanna select 4-3. Now, if you ever select 4-3 and you notice that your crop looks vertical, all you have to do is tap that little circle arrow at the bottom and it will shift from vertical to horizontal. So now we're just gonna grab the corner of the photo and what I'm looking for is to make sure I'm not getting any edges of my surfaces, but I also want to make sure that I'm keeping the product centered. And I want to have a little bit of the bats in there. So I'm watching my bottom and my top. Now I think that looks pretty good. So I'm going to hit the check mark in the bottom right hand corner. And that was step one of resizing. We cropped to the proper shape. Now, when we went and made this crop, you'll notice that we cropped out, which removed a portion of this photo. And in doing that, we actually removed some of the photo's pixels. So if we go back to that original image, you will notice that we had 21 megapixels and our pixel dimensions were 5,328 by 4,000. If we take a look at the photo that we just cropped, we've cropped out pixels. So now our pixel dimensions are 3,843 by 2,883, which leads us to step two of resizing, which is reducing the pixel dimensions. Now, all three of these steps, they correlate, as you will see. But most of the time, we have to take it a step further and actually address each of them. 
So when we cropped the photo in step one, while it removed pixels, it didn't remove enough. So Etsy's recommendation is that your pixel dimensions be 2000 on the shortest side. Now, again, this is just a recommendation. Right now, as I'm recording this video, if you are uploading images that have pixel dimensions between about 1500 to 2500, that is perfectly fine. I wouldn't really go much lower than 1500, but I wouldn't really go any higher than 3000 because when you have a lot of pixels, again, you're going to have a larger file size and we're going to have to do a significant quality reduction to reduce that file size for fast loading. So for step two of resizing, to reduce the pixel dimensions, we're going to go to the little three dots in the top right-hand corner. And we're going to select settings. And you'll see at the bottom, there's an export and share options. And the first one you'll see is image sizing. If we click on that, we have the option to not resize the pixels. We have the option to make the pixels 8,000, 1,366, 1,920, 2,000, or 4,000. Now, if you notice at the top, it says choose the maximum image size. So what that means is that this pixel dimension is going to be applied to the side of the image that has the most width or height. So in a landscape, that's going to be the width. Well, Etsy recommends 2,000 pixels on the shortest side, which in our case would be the height. So Snapseed does leave us in a bit of a pickle because we only have the options of 2,000 or 4,000. Well, 4,000 is going to be way too big for photos online. So we have to select that 2,000 option. Now, when I selected 2000 and I saved the photo, I pulled the metadata up on it. And you'll notice now that this specific image is 2000 by 1500 pixels. So while it doesn't necessarily meet Etsy's recommendation of 2000 pixels on the shortest side, because we have 1501 on the shortest side, but 2000 by 1500 pixels is perfectly fine for your Etsy photos. So that was step two of resizing. Step three of resizing is reducing the file size with a quality reduction. This just means you're going to compress the image data to make the file size a little smaller. So we're going to tap the three dots in the top right-hand corner. And we're going to select settings. And at the very bottom, you're going to see format and quality. Click that. So I have that set to JPEG 100. There is a JPEG 95 option, an 80 option, and then PNG. Typically, we're going to focus on the JPEG 80% option. Because by this time, as I've mentioned, with step one, we cropped out some of the pixels. And then in step two, we reduced the actual pixel dimensions to meet recommendations for uploading your images online. And as I mentioned before, all of these steps correlate. Each time we take a step, we're reducing our pixel dimensions, which in theory, we're reducing our file size as well because we're removing data. So typically a JPEG 80 is going to give us a file size that's under one megabyte, which is Etsy's recommendation. I'm going to tap that back arrow. I'm going to save the photo. Now, for these settings to actually be applied to your final image, you do have to use the export options in a very specific way, which I will cover saving and exporting your product photos in video five. Now, here's the metadata on the most recent image that I saved. So you'll notice three megapixels. It has 2000 by 1500 for its pixel dimensions, which that second number, that 1500 was determined based on step one, where we chose the four, three aspect ratio. So for every four units of width, there's three units of height. So you just select the maximum. So for whatever side is largest in dimension. And then because we set it to a four, three aspect ratio, the other pixels dimensions are determined. So you'll notice in this photo, we have three megapixels. Our pixel dimensions are 2000 by 1500 and one. And our file size is now 474 kilobytes, which is now under Etsy's recommendation of 
keeping your file size under one megabyte for fast loading times. If you want to learn more about resizing your photos for Etsy, click the link right here to see my latest video. Please take the time to like this video if you found it useful. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want to learn more about taking your own high quality product photos. See you next time.